Hello everyone, just a quick video response to a vaporizer, gas vaporizer I saw that was fitted to an automobile. Uh, here are a couple of my ideas and suggestions and you are welcome to take this idea and run with it and if you develop something from it I would absolutely love to see your your creativity put to work so I'm gonna briefly cover the vaporizer idea we had I had previously discussed using an oil bath air cleaner from the 30s to actually contain fuel instead of oil to allow the vaporization process to occur and basically how that works is oil sits in the bottom of a bath right here and then there's some screens in here basically and the air path basically makes the oil get sucked up into the screen and trickle back down as the air passes through it. I can't draw the exact shape that it is right at the moment, but that's a very basic way of how an oil bath air filter works. So the oil actually absorbs the dirt. And the idea is replacing the oil with fuel. The vaporization process occurs here and then the vapors are sucked into the engine and used accordingly. I have came up with a slightly different way that relies on a couple of, of different techniques and basically instead of a canister like this where the airflow actually has to change directions to before it enters the engine to help pull the, the fuel across there I've designed a canister style vaporizer that is a straight through design so basically intake air goes in here and then air with vapor mix comes out here and here's how this works basically there's a series of tubes right here that run along the length of the whole thing and the thing about the tube is there's a slot cut in it lengthwise so the top of the tube is actually exposed and I have thought about a couple different ways to do this like putting some dimples in here to actually kind of ramp the fuel and make it scatter a little bit forcing a little bit of fuel to scatter out of the tube and basically we have a series of these tubes that run the length of this so this is basically if you were looking at the end of it and so the engine airflow would actually come through a smaller outlet here in the center you know that's three inches or whatever and then the whole thing is actually like five or six inches in diameter and not only do these tubes just run lengthwise uh, I imagine this having like a rifling to it, like a rifling in a gun, where if you were to take one end and affix it to something, and imagine taking the other end and twisting it clockwise or counterclockwise, so all of these tubes have a twist before they get to the other end. And the twist is crucial, I feel, because basically how this works is we boil the fuel. And I actually found another video for a really good heat exchanger design that will actually preheat the fuel to the desired temperature. I'll post a link in the description below. It, and the, the uh, link that I'm posting up, it's actually not intended specifically for that purpose, but the design is perfect. Like, it can directly be adapted to this, no problems whatsoever. So, imagine your fuel passes through the heat exchanger and then it's then boiled. And in this case for this I think we'll still want some actual fuel to still flow through there not just the vapor and we'll get to that in a second so basically your fuel vapor charge goes into this end so imagine that all these tubes have a manifold that connects them together and so the fuel flows in here and when it goes into this tube here something interesting happens because the tubes are rifled the air velocity rushing past should pull the fuel through these tubes and maybe not necessarily outside the tube but the liquid fuel would stay in the tube and gravity in essence would help keep it in the bottom of the tube as it spins around the larger tube with the air volume moving through it and the more air velocity that moves through this the greater this of a chance this effect has it actually working like it's theorized here and so on the other side of this, 
there would be another manifold and like a scavenge pump. Think of like an oil scavenging pump for remote mount turbocharger systems or even an oil scavenge pump that you would see in a turbine engine. And that would pull any remaining fuel, unburned fuel, out the other end of the tubes and recycle it back into the system. And I think this might actually work really well. And a couple of reasons is that just the vapor itself in theory would be enough to run the engine and we may still have to do like a separate vapor tube into a vacuum line to keep the engine running under high vacuum because the throttle plate's really going to have to be open for this to have any effect at all so whether that be running the engine idling from electronic fuel injection or doing the smaller vaporizer system I think this is the ticket because if you spin this out of aluminum or something like that and it backfires since the tube you know this three inch this is hopefully matching the the diameter of whatever intake we're using in you know intake tube so the fire would just blow straight through here and yeah there may be fuel vapor present in these tubes but one crucial thing to remember about this is that the fuel actually doesn't make contact with air until it hits here so basically we're boiling the fuel yes and the fuel is very vaporous yes but it requires that air to uh, to actually burn so all that takes place here mixes here before it enters the engine and if it backfires it'll just blow out the front of it and I really doubt that it would blow this apart and if it did it would probably end up hurting something else in the engine beforehand so that's a quick basic explanation of the vaporizer idea I had. I would love for somebody to take and run with this or if you have any ideas on improving this, I plan on building building a variation of this myself. And one other thing in response to this video was a good design of a flashback arrestor. And you know this is pretty comparable to most designs of a flashback arrestor, but basically imagine we have a piece of PVC pipe here, a PVC T we have a cap on one end and then we have a custom shaped piston and a fairly white light weight spring here so you can see here two engine this is where the throttle plate would be two air box this is where the vaporizer would be you know or oil bath air cleaner or whatever you have and so you'll notice that this piston is actually shaped in such a way that under very light load conditions this doesn't have to be open much to get just enough through that you need and then when this is open all the way the curvature of this will help guide the airflow you know keep keep things smooth smooth you know flowing really nice <clears throat> and this spring here I know would have to be really lightweight this can be comparable to the mechanical fuel injection systems on older VW's where they actually used a metering flap to figure out how much fuel needed to enter the engine and basically how that worked is you had the bottom of the air box and then inside the air box you had this flapper here this is definitely not to scale so bear with me and this is the fuel distributor with lines coming out of it so basically there's a little flap in here that was attached to an arm and it's got a little spring on it not much spring weight at all but basically this depended on the engine suction to lift this flap up and it would open a metering valve in here up a little bit more and that would allow fuel to flow to the engine if you put the vaporizer underneath this flap here this would definitely slam shut under the first hint of pressure so that's also a really good consideration when building a flashback arrestor you could almost base it off of one of the old VW injection systems and get away with it versus this which may look a little more homemade may even obstruct flow a little bit more because the flap in this that disc is at least four and a half five inches in diameter which gives quite a bit of surface area once it's lifted up you know two or three inches under wide open throttle I've studied some other videos and stuff in the past and one thing I noticed with this vaporizer system is if it is the only thing running an engine there is a significant amount of lag between the time that you plant your foot down and the time that you get you know any kind of decent response out of it 
So I feel that anyone working towards a final solution on a gas vaporizer system for their automobile will still need to take into account that there needs to be some type of fuel injection to accommodate for you know, sudden changes in throttle position. Basically what would amount to an accelerator pump on an old carburetor. You know, you just gotta supply enough fuel to in the meantime before the rest of this can catch up and and do the work that it needs to do. So one other thing in regards to this video response was my comment about the EGR system. Before deciding to use your EGR system in such a project like this, there are a couple of considerations that you'll need to make. First of all, let's examine what an EGR system does. EGR stands for Exhaust Gas Recirculation. I'll just do a recirc for short. And basically how that works is your engine has one or more exhaust manifolds. So let's just say that this is an exhaust manifold for the sake of ugly lines. And there's a tube that comes off of one of the exhaust ports and it doesn't necessarily matter which one. And then it'll go to your intake manifold. And somewhere in between here is a valve called e an EGR valve and it really depends on the vehicle and where it is. Um, Subarus, it'll actually be like bolted to the intake manifold. I think some Fords are like that too. I've seen some Dodges where they actually have a little valve here so like it'll come out of the exhaust manifold. The pipe will be oh six, eight, tw twelve inches long at the very most and then it'll have the valve and then there'll be another metal pipe that runs across the intake manifold. Now the reason why this tube is metal is because it gets very hot because you know these are exhaust gases and people ask well why do I need this on my engine? Well it actually helps the efficiency of your engine as it operates by recirculating a little bit of exhaust gases into here we are able to increase the uh, the completeness that the combustion gases burn at and people see roughly a 5 to 10 percent increase in engine efficiency when it's equipped with an EGR system. Now the reason why we need to take all this stuff into consideration is basically these valves. You, if say for example you have the Dodge or Chevy, some Chevys have it too, like the old Camaro, where you have the EGR valve sitting just above the exhaust manifold then this is a pretty easy system to tee into because basically you would want to tee in between the valve and the intake manifold. And the reason for that is if the valve's closed, no manifold vacuum will be pulled on this line. So therefore your vapor fuel mixture won't get pulled into the engine. So that valve location is very imperative. Some other options, I mean, you can take off your intake manifold and drill and tap a hole for a new piece of tubing. I saw the brake booster T as well, and you can actually still do the brake booster thing. There's just a couple of things to be mindful of. One is that on the brake booster itself, the vacuum line that comes out of there, there should be a check valve on that. And the check valve is so vacuum is held inside the brake booster, even if the engine dies. So that allows you to still have full brake pressure for quite a while, actually, if the system's sealed and working properly. So if you actually tee into your line between the booster and the engine, but don't do it at the booster, go like at the engine and then maybe give yourself a little bit of an uphill or something before the brake booster so that way if a bunch of fuel gets trapped in here it doesn't leak down into the booster and cause problems down the road. So yeah, you can definitely still use the booster upon further review you just want to get that sucker as close to the intake manifold as you can and you know that's probably your best option if your EGR valve is up against the intake manifold like we discussed here you know you can't end up using that tube like like I had originally thought so anyway hope that helps you in your adventures if you have any questions comments concerns or suggestions you are more than welcome to leave a comment on my YouTube video or you can find me over at Doogie Labs Dot com. That's D-O-O-G-I-E labs.com. Thanks for checking me out. Have a good day.